Welcome. This module provides an overview of a communication plan and process for addressing barriers. Let's take a moment to reflect on your own experiences with communication related to a change or being asked to do something new. Was it clear what you were being asked to do? How did communication impact your ability to do that? And could that communication have been more clear? We know that effective communication is essential to the successful implementation of any initiative in a district. Clear, proactive communication ensures staff know what is happening across the district and what their role is in supporting it. In this module, districts will learn how to establish systems for consistent, efficient, and effective communication, as well as how to develop a process for communicating and addressing implementation barriers in order to better support their schools in the implementation of an MTSS framework. At the end of this module, participants will be able to explain the purpose and core components of a communication plan and process for addressing implementation barriers. In addition, they will be able to provide examples of how to effectively use both to support implementation of MTSS. This graphic represents the core components of a district implementation infrastructure. The district implementation team oversees the development of the district infrastructure. The two core components addressed in this module are a communication plan and a barrier removal process. The MDE MTSS essential component of team-based leadership explicitly prompts the development of a formal communication plan to ensure effective communication with internal and external stakeholders regarding implementation of MTSS. It also addresses the development of a formal process to address internal and external implementation barriers. Development and use of a communication plan and process for addressing internal barriers are measured by DCA items 10 through 12. Item 10 outlines the components of a communication plan Item 11 prompts the use of a process to communicate and address internal barriers, while item 12 focuses on communication with external stakeholders about policy relevant information, such as with the intermediate school district or the state. So why is it so critical to focus on communication? Time should be spent formalizing the communication process because effective communication is the best way to prevent and solve problems. This quote adapted from Bradford Winner, an American motion picture writer and producer, illustrates the need for effective communication and how it impacts the district's ability to support implementation. By spending time proactively and purposefully communicating about MTSS, the district will be better prepared to prevent and solve implementation challenges and support implementation overall. In any organization, communication happens. To be effective, useful to the work, and include all appropriate levels, communication must be strategically planned and monitored. Effective communication provides an opportunity for the district and schools to identify successes in implementation challenges and to work together to problem solve and continuously improve supports to schools. And we know effective implementation of MTSS at the school level leads to improved outcomes for students. This section outlines the purpose and components of a communication plan, as well as how to effectively use the plan to support implementation. A communication plan is defined as a written document which outlines the protocols and process for communicating to and gathering information from internal and external groups and teams whose work would be impacted by the selection and use of effective innovations across the district. The plan not only outlines the information that needs to be communicated to the groups, but also information and feedback that is gathered as well. A communication plan has four components. The remainder of this section will further define each of the four components. Let's start first with identifying the groups and or teams, both internal and external, 
whose work is impacted by MTSS implementation. Groups identified within the plan will be developed on the context and size of the district. When identifying groups and or teams to include on your communication plan, consideration should be given to internal teams whose work overlaps with MTSS, such as an SEL group or reading committee. Groups or teams who make decisions and support removal, removal of barriers, such as executive leadership and administrators. Groups or teams that support MTSS implementation, such as the school leadership teams and coaches. Groups that influence curriculum, instruction, assessment, such as curriculum groups, Board of Education, and the Intermediate School District. You will also want to consider to what extent communication may need to occur with all staff and the larger community, such as families, community organizations, and businesses. For small districts, including all staff in the district communication plan could prove beneficial, especially in smaller districts where it can spread quickly. Proactive communication with all staff would provide a clear, consistent message and potentially decrease the impact of the rumor mill. Having a process for all staff to ensure communication gets back to the DIT will also help ensure all staff voices are heard. Once groups have been identified, designees for each group will need to be selected. Designees will function as a primary point person for communication. For each stakeholder group, selected designees will be responsible for the back and forth communication between the stakeholder group and the district implementation team. When selecting designees, consider the type of information that will need to be communicated, who has easy access to the group, and who has time to ensure communication occurs within established timelines, such as one to, do, one to two days of the meeting. For example, some designees may include a curriculum council designee and the DIT. The DIT designee would be the curriculum director and the curriculum council designee would be the council chair. Another example would be the school leadership team in the DIT. The DIT designee would be the MTSS coordinator and the school leadership team designee would be the coach. The third component of the plan, communication protocols, outline the process groups follow when communication needs to occur. Protocols have, uh, provide the who, when, and how of communication with each group. It outlines the critical information the DIT needs to share with each group and the information the group needs to communicate with the DIT to support successful implementation. These need to knows should be developed collaboratively and mutually agreed upon. In addition to the who and what of communication, the protocol also includes the frequency of communication and the format or method. A protocol may not be necessary for every group listed on the communication plan. It is possible that some communication may be disseminated to some stakeholder groups through the use of social media or email. In these instances, docu document relevant components of the protocol to ensure communication occurs as intended. Also, although regular opportunities to gather information from some groups may not be necessary, Consider when there might be opportunities for these groups to share their perspectives about how implementation is going. Here is an example of a linking communication protocol between the district implementation team and the school leadership team. In the first column, you see the name of the group that DIT is communicating with. In this example, we have the school leadership team. In the second column are a list of topics that need to be communicated from the DIT to the school leadership team. And in the third column is the information that needs to be communicated from the school leadership team to the DIT. Each group has an identified designee to support back and forth communication on behalf of the group. In the example, you see the roles of the, de of the designee listed. 
ensuring the role is included helps with updating protocols and supports sustainability in the event of staff turnover. However, some districts choose to also include the names of individuals along with the role they serve. Finally, the last column outlines the various methods that are used to support communication, as well as the frequency with which they are used. The last component of a communication plan is the development and use of a communication survey to measure the effectiveness of communication with all identified stakeholder groups. Use of a survey will help the DIT determine to what degree communication is effective, as well as identify any areas for improvement. By asking stakeholders to provide feedback about communication, it shows that good communication is important to the district. It also reduces the likelihood of comments being made about poor communication when the results are used to improve the plan. Consider collecting this data one to two times a year, but at least annually. For a survey to yield valuable information, the response rate needs to be high enough to ensure that is representative of the group. When collecting a survey, consider strategies that will increase the number of people who respond. The use of electronic surveys makes completion easy and efficient. Providing time during meetings for groups to complete the survey will also increase the response rate. When designing the survey, consider other ways to make it quick and easy for respondents to complete. If you can keep the survey short and simple, while still getting the feedback you need to improve, more people will be likely to respond. It's not enough to develop a communication plan. In order for it to be effective, it must be consistently used. There are many strategies and ways the communication plan can be effectively used. Some teams include communication as a standing item on their meeting agendas and meeting minutes which prompts and provides evidence of planning for communication. Other teams assign a team member the role of communication liaison to support communication. Still other teams develop communication templates or Google Forms framed around the need to knows and prompt their use following every meeting. Communication surveys also provide evidence of both use and effectiveness of the communication plan. At least annually, teams should review and update their plan to ensure it is accurate. In section two, we will learn more about how to develop a process for addressing barriers to further support effective communication. Recall the, ex the example linking communication protocol shared earlier. Linking communication protocols prompt the communication of many need to knows, including barriers to implementation. Schools need a way to communicate barriers they cannot remove on their own to the district implementation team. And the DIT needs a process for communicating with decision makers in order to remove them. A barrier removal process outlines the series of steps that need to be followed to communicate implementation barriers to the DIT as well as the steps the DIT will follow to ensure additional communication occurs and barriers are removed. The DIT's role is to develop the process, communicate barriers to decision makers, and support removal, not necessarily to generate action steps or solve the barrier themselves. School leadership teams will inevitably face barriers to installing or implementing MTSS that they are unable to remove on their own. When this occurs, the DIT needs a process for communicating those barriers to the right people or groups with decision-making authority in order for barriers to be removed and the work to continue. These critical steps are documented in the barrier removal process. Within the steps of the process, several decisions need to be made. Before a process can be developed, a common definition of an implementation barrier needs to be established. Next, a process for groups to communicate barriers to the DIT needs to be determined, including how barriers will be recorded and tracked. Use of a barrier log is one way of tracking barriers. 
Some teams also incorporate use of a Google form linked to meeting agendas to prompt other teams to use the process. Decisions also need to be made about when and with whom barriers will be discussed, who will be responsible for communicating with decision makers and groups outside the DIT, and how action steps and timelines for barrier removal will be documented. In addition, a process will need to be established for communicating status updates to the district implementation team until the barrier is removed. After all of the actions to address the barrier have been taken, a process will also be needed to ensure that barrier removal was effective. We will know if removal was effective by asking the individuals who reported the barrier whether our actions sufficiently addressed the implementation challenge. Barriers will not always be removed by the DIT. Depending on the type of barrier being addressed and the makeup of the DIT, it may require communication with individuals or groups outside the team to support identification of next steps to address the barrier. In these instances, it is helpful to know who can address different types of barriers and make decisions necessary to remove barriers. To support this step, individuals on the DIT will need to be identified as the designee to communicate barriers to the appropriate decision makers. Once the process is developed, it needs to be used to be effective. This means all steps of the process must be cons consistently addressed, including the follow-up to determine if barriers have been effectively addressed and removed. Teams have developed different ways to ensure the process is prompted and used. One way to increase use is to include implementation challenges or barriers as a standing agenda topic on the team meeting agenda. During this topic, teams review any new barriers and plan the communication and or next steps that need to occur to address them. It's also an opportunity to review progress on the removal of existing barriers. Many teams find the use of a barrier log to track barriers and keep track of progress a helpful tool. The log can include documentation of the follow-up conversations that occurred to ensure the barrier was removed. This is one example of how a barrier log might be structured. Use of a barrier log provides written documentation of the barrier removal process In linking it to meeting agendas will increase its use. To summarize, communication is most effective when researched, planned, and evaluated. To get started, identify the groups and teams that will support implementation of MTSS within your district and develop a written communication plan for those groups. Once you have that plan in place, consider the steps that need to be taken to ensure schools have a process for communicating implementation barriers to the DIT to support their removal. And finally, ensure all stakeholder groups understand the components of both processes and their role in supporting their use. This concludes our module. Thank you for your time.